So I wanted to make sure I have a place where I can talk about magnetic monopoles um, before I uh, lose the, the right time in the semester to do that. Because uh, you do hear me refer to magnetic monopoles. So that's uh, kind of number one thing that magnetism is uh, different from electricity in that there are no magnetic monopoles. And um, I, I hope that emphasis kind of struck you as a, a bit odd. Um, it's not too often that we talk, give so much time to things that don't exist. Like, you know, I don't spend any time in lecture why there are no leprechauns or why, um, I don't know, there are double rainbows, so that's not a good example. Um, but, you know, normally things that don't exist, we don't spend, if we don't waste the time, why they don't exist. Uh, magnetic monopoles, um, I guess uh, this is uh, in a more broader category. It falls under what you might call um, searches for physics beyond the standard model, which is a uh, shorthand for saying searches for physics that go beyond um, what we, the laws of nature as we know them currently. And not just in terms of, you know, small corrections here and there, but more in terms of a big uh, structural uh, change. So, so, uh, uh, so an elementary particle that carries a magnetic charge would be a new type of particle that indicates a new physics that um, is that that would uh, change the underlying structure of physics as we know it. And that's the kind of thing that makes physicists excited, uh, both the experimentalists and theorists, because that's the kind of um, kind of um, a discovery that will lead to Nobel Prize and great fame and fortune and whatever. So that's the kind of thing that makes physics excited. So uh, it falls under that broader category of a search for physics beyond the standard model. And um, usually those searches have a bit of a motivation behind it. There's a, so, you know, it, I mean, I guess with the magnetic monopole, there's one piece of motivation is that comparison with electricity that we have electric charges. So it's a natural question to ask, um, why, is it, why aren't there magnetic charges? And what I want you to point out now in the next few minutes is uh, some, um, some additional reasons beyond the simple comparison that uh, really argues for existence of magnetic monopole that, you know, 100 years from now, if we haven't found the magnetic monopole, uh, or at least a really good reason why they don't exist, uh, we'll be a bit uh, disappointed. So, um, so this link goes to the Wikipedia page. Let me use that as a mostly, as a thing to display in the background while I talk about some stuff. So, you know, this is the description of the lack of magnetic monopole, the most permanent magnet you know of. You break it, you get still dipoles that everyone's familiar with. And so, you know, this page goes into a lot of things. I'll just uh, point to three things. One is the um, kind of most uh, compelling uh, reasoning for why we want magnetic monopole to exist, um, a theoretical reason for that. And uh, second, I will uh, highlight some of the experimental searches that have gone on. Uh, one uh, signal that got, yeah, so, uh, so I guess uh, whenever you hear me talk about magnetic monopole, I hope you will never hear me say that there's no experimental evidence for magnetic monopole because there have been some, uh, they just haven't been reproduced. <laughs> so I should always be qualified. There hasn't been any reproducible evidence for existence of magnetic monopole. Um, so, um, so I'll point out some experimental Evi uh, searches, not evidences, searches. And uh, finally, I will end with, if we ever find the magnetic monopole, what modification for the classical electromagnetism that we would be making? So uh, the first, the reason uh, we are hoping that there is magnetic monopole 
is that uh, it's an answer to another question we have. Um, so Dirac's quantization is the shorthand way to refer to it. Uh, and the question is, is this, um, why are electric charges quantized? As in, they come in discrete units. They come in units of that elementary charge E, that's the um, electron charge, also the proton charge. And uh, depending on how much physics you know, you might also know about quarks and how quarks carry uh, charges in the unit of a third. But even then it doesn't change the fact that it's quantized still. It's quantized in a, in a third of what we thought it was, but it's still quantized meaning you can get a, an arbitrary fraction of E as an amount of charge on something. And you know, it's an interesting question that did, there wasn't really a good answer to until um, until this uh, uh, theoretical uh, argument that Paul Dirac came up with in the context of quantum mechanics. And, um, you know, so I won't go into all the detail um, except to say that, um, that in working through this, um, um, or work, working through this, uh, uh, the, 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 um, this uh, classical effect that applies to, wait, is it, uh, it I don't know. I always thought of uh, I always thought of it as classical effect, but let me not get into that. Um, that from the more elementary quantization rules, that angular momentum is quantized, which is covered in physics four C. Um, that if a magnetic monopole exists, we can derive theoretically that this has to be quantized. And that would mean that uh, from the existence of a single magnetic monopole, uh, an electric charge would have to be quantized. So if uh, we ever find a magnetic monopole, that gives a great reason why electric charges have to be quantized. So that's the, really the theoretical justification that um, that it's a it's an attractive thing to have <laughs> that uh, magnetic monopole existing would fill some gaps in our theory, uh, some explanation of why certain things are certain way. So people have been looking for it. People are still looking for it, and this page describes uh, some searches for magnetic monopoles. And the story that I was told, I think it was this one here, the one in the 80s. Um, it's a search using superconducting magnet and superconducting loop rather. And um, there's a kind of signal that would get generated on that superconducting loop uh, when particles go through it. And um, I guess when it's uh, any kind of regular particle that could be a magnetic dipole, uh, after the magnetic dipole goes through it, the signal that gets generated, it gets averaged out to zero. It's only when a magnetic, um, it's when a magnetic monopole goes through that there would be a persistent current and uh, people have, uh, can estimate how much current there should be. And when this guy did the experiment, he found that amount of current and it was around the range that you would expect it to be. And um, so uh, that is uh, described in, on this article here, which I guess you must be able to read it without any special access. So you can take a look. And um, so uh, let me see if there's a, a Navarro. Uh, uh, Cabrera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, wonder if there's a. There isn't a, a figure of the plot that he. Uh, eh. So, so that uh, small blip of a signal is the. Um, that's the extent of the existing experimental evidence. And I think he got a grant to, uh, to rebuild, uh, to build a larger apparatus and 
uh, search for and uh, the similar event, but it hasn't been reproduced. So, uh, so at the moment, as far as how we describe goals, there is no magnetic monopole. Uh, it has been found, but people are still searching for it. Um, I think he's a physicist at UC Berkeley who, I, I guess uh, he says retract this claim. So, um, so you know, there have been um, false hopes. And I think currently there are experiments at CERN, um, Large Hadron Collider that's CERN in Europe, uh, that they are still looking for magnetic monopole. And it would be, um, because no known elementary particles carry magnetic charge, it would have to be a new type of uh, elementary particle. And I'm, I would guess without knowing too much that in existing theories or, or th theories of physics beyond the standard model that um, like a supersymmetry, string theory, that they would predict some uh, new particles with the magnetic monopole. So this also serves as a test of those theories. If those theories predict a particular particle with magnetic monopole and uh, by and these, theory, these experiments, even when they don't find the magnetic monopole, they place a limit on what the parameters on those the magnetic monopoles can be. So, um, so yeah, that's the experimental searches of magnetic monopole. And this is one of those things that if we ever find it, it'll be a much long weighted uh, discovery. There are uh, modifications to the theory that's already in place, just ready to be put into place. So, um, so this is something that we will eventually get to by the end of the semester. <laughs> you have seen Gauss's law, or rather you have seen the integral version of Gauss's law. And what you will see next week is Ampere's law. And the, so you will see the, um, the integral version of Ampere's law. And when you see Ampere's law, um, Oh, is this? Uh, mm, okay, so Ampere's law, I guess, doesn't get any modification. So, um, so yeah. So this, well, you'll see a, ver a simplified version of this next week. Um, so the first place where you would get modification is Faraday's law, which is about two to three weeks away. <laughs> and when you see Faraday's law, you are only going to see this, uh, oh, this is image. You're going to only see up to this point. So the additional term that would show up if we had a magnetic monopole would be this magnetic current that would nicely match up with the electric current that generates the magnetic field. And, um, and we, so when, we, when I talk about Maxwell's equations, that's the, really the first place you will hear me mention this, and this will change so that it looks more like the version for the electric field. So, so that's a kind of the wrap up, wrap on magnetic monopole. Um, it, people are looking for it, and until someone finds it, our party line is that there are no magnetic monopoles. <laughs> and we'll, um, so we'll always be using this version of equations. We won't be using the one on the right hand side, regardless of how much we hope all of this is true. Because until we actually find the magnetic monopole, the line we have to stick with is that, well, it doesn't exist. And once we find it, then we are ready to switch over. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's it. So, you know, for the vast bulk of this class, um, magnetic monopole doesn't have a big impact, <laughs> but uh, it, it's, uh, I think it's something that may be relevant to people who might be going into physics research. Um, this is uh, an area of uh, physics research that interests a lot of people in that field. <laughs> and uh, it might interest someone who uh, are thinking of, a research career in physics.